Hi, everyone. Not sure if I'm on yet. Oh, hello, everyone. Good morning. How are you today? So we're here for another another lesson in how to maximize the capacity of your nervous system, of your brain, of your instrument, right? So here's the thing. There's lots of stuff going on out there right now. There's lots of crazy things happening in the world, as we all know, and it doesn't matter what side of the spectrum you stand on, a lot of us are feeling the distress. And so we're coming here. My name is Michael Boyle, and I am a therapist, a psychotherapist in Taos, New Mexico area. And I'm working alongside Not Forgotten Outreach to provide these educational resources um, for, so, so that you can benefit in these difficult times where all a lot of us are at home, a lot of us are feeling the worries and the pains of isolation. A lot of us are feeling the worries and the pains of COVID or political situations or what have you. And uh, so we wanna provide some tools and some resources for you. If you need more than that, of course, please do reach out and Not Forgotten Outreach is a great resource to be able to hook you up to other resources. You're welcome to leave a comment and I can answer some questions or try to point you in a good direction myself. But these are educational resources that are meant for your empowerment. Um, the basic gist of it is, is, is that we have a body, <laughs> to state the obvious, we have a mind, we have a spirit, we have an intellect, we have emotions, and we can either learn how to use those tools to our advantage, or we can kind of be the the puppet on the puppet strings being pulled around by circumstances. Now it's quite normal to be influenced or pulled around by circumstances and it takes a fair degree of training. It takes a fair degree of, of dedication and willingness and know how to be able to kind of take the reins back and take the power back and say, look, I'm in charge of how I think. I'm in charge of how I feel. I'm in charge of how I act. And one of the first things to kind of wrestle with and get control of, um, maybe control isn't exactly the right word because we actually need to use kind of a, a gentle approach in order for this to work. And I'll get to it later. This is not just, it's not just um, that I'm interested in, in a soft approach. In fact, the soft approach is the, is the right approach. It's the only approach that works in this case because the mind is a really slippery place and we need to kind of be more like the horse or the dog whisperer than the one that tries to whip our dog or horse into shape. Whipping our dog or horse into shape doesn't really work. So the topic of today's video is to stop harassing ourselves. There's enough, there's enough stuff going on out there. There's enough difficulties, but we all are familiar. Anyone familiar with the inner critic, the petty tyrant, the monkey mind, just the constant, the near constant kind of ticker tape parade of berating ourselves, of beating ourselves up, of criticizing things, of judging, of just, um, you know, adding insult to injury, you know. And one of the reasons why I'm bringing this to you is because, you know, I practice these things. I, I live these tools myself. And so over this last week, I've been, I've had some challenges. Last week, my son got sick. And then my daughter got sick and she's only two and then I got sick and then we're thinking, of course, we're thinking, wow, uh oh, I hope this isn't COVID. <clears throat> and it turns out we've all been tested. So I'll spare you the suspense. We've all been tested and it is not COVID, but it definitely activated my activated my anxiety. It activated my fight, flight or freeze response. It activated my distress response and had a I had an ongoing kind of mental chatter that was saying, what if, or, oh no, or what's wrong with you? Or, you know, how could you do this? And analyzing everything, or maybe did you do, did you, how could you risk your kids? You know, whatever it is. And it, all of which was extremely, extremely counterproductive because at this point now we have a cold and it's a, a normal cold. And now I want my immune system to be working for me, but when my fight, flight, or freeze system, when the survival part of the brain is working, the immune system is actually really, really impaired because think about it this way. When I am really angry, fight. When I am, really, when I am afraid, flight. Or when I am depressed, hopeless, helpless, numb, freeze. Fight, flight, or freeze. 
That is the survival part of the brain, okay? That survival part of the brain is not interested in my being happy. It's interested in only my survival. It's not interested in it's it, according to the nervous system, which not isn't really thinking rationally about things. It's just saying, oh, well, if you're angry, you're afraid, you're depressed, well, then you must be in danger. And so it takes resources away from things that are good for our long term health and happiness. And it puts them, it activates them for immediate danger. But it's not the type of immediate danger that most of us are facing nowadays. And most of us are facing, you know, stress, worries about the future or regrets about the past or emotional difficulties with our partners, right? Whatever it is, or feeling, you know, a little bit discouraged about being in the house a lot or whatever it is. But the survival part of the brain, what it prepares for is immediate danger. And it says, well, that means according to the brain, there's a tiger in the room. And if, if there's a tiger in the room, I'm not going to waste time digesting food. I'm not going to waste time and energy healing the healing that common cold. I'm not going to waste time and energy growing my hair and nails. I'm not going to waste time and energy to uh, enjoy the beautiful sunset. I am going to shunt resources away from those things and put them into the survival mode only. So that inner critic, that inner petty tyrant, that inner monkey mind that's saying, oh no, what if, or that bastard, or I'm such a loser, or whatever, that is keeping us stuck in a state of survival that is counterproductive, not only to our happiness, because obviously we know we're not happy when we're in those states, but it's also um, a detriment to our physical health and well-being, okay? So what I'm here to talk about today is what do we do about that? How do we stop harassing ourselves? Okay, and we need practical tools because it's one thing to understand this all and that's another thing to say, well, what the heck do I do about it? Well, here today is a what the heck do I do about it? Okay, so this is a familiar model for those that have been following the videos, but I'm gonna repeat it anyhow. And what we've just been talking about, this is the three part brain this is obviously a, an extreme oversimplification of the brain. You have the rational thinking brain, you have the emotional brain, you have the instinctual brain. This can also be said to be like the human brain, the mammalian brain, and the reptilian brain. And right in here, there's, a, there's an alarm switch. And that alarm switch, um, for useful intents and purposes, we can call it the amygdala. Of course, it's many things interacting at once. When that alarm switch goes on, and we go into surviving mode like I was just discussing, then we have only three gears, fight, flight, and freeze. Here's the thing, right? So think of it like a gear shift. You go, okay, now I'm in fight, I'm in flight, I'm in freeze. That's the only options when we're in the survival mode. You know, So we can't expect ourselves to think, feel, or act differently than anger, fear, or depression if we are in survival mode. It's literally biologically and neurologically impossible. So when we're beating ourselves, when our mind is, when we're having those nights where we can't sleep and, we, and we're worried and we're thinking and then we go, and then we're, why, well, why can't I just go to sleep? Or what's wrong with me? Or just shut up or, you know, and then we're trying to watch Netflix to numb it out. Well, that's freeze. You know, we're taking, we're basically using the survival mode to try to get rid of the survival mode. And that doesn't work. That's like fighting fire with fire. We need to fight fire with water. So if I'm beating myself up, if I'm saying, what's wrong with me? Why can't I just, why can't I just let it go? Why can't I just relax? Why am I so feel so afraid? Or, it's, or if I'm going, oh no, what if it really happens? And what, or oh, this is so stupid, you know, or, you know, or I'm going to numb out. I'm going to numb out. I'm going to have, I'm going to overeat. I'm going to drink. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, watch 15 you know episodes in a row all these things th these are fight flight and freeze strategies so you're you can't solve a problem from the level where it's at so how do we kind of trick ourselves in a certain sense by learning the mechanisms of the brain and the nervous system we can learn how to kind of trick ourselves out of these states 
And the irony is, is that we have to get out of the state in order to get out of the state. Now I know what well, does that that sounds like kind of like double talk, but so a lot of what I'm going to share with you today, you're going to have to just kind of feel into and see if you can kind of get a sense of what I mean, because so, there are some things about it that that are just experiential. Okay. And so we need to, but basically the gist of it is we need to fight fire with water instead of fighting fire with fire. And I'm likening the survival part of the brain to the fire and and the the petty tyrant, the monkey mind, the inner critic, the dictator, that all those inner voices, I'm I'm liking that to more fire. And so we have we we kind of have this conditioning or this belief that if I beat myself up, if I chastise myself enough, I will correct. And that's actually not really how it works. We might have been learnt, taught that, we might have been raised that way, we might have had military training that enforced that, we might have had uh, a boss that has enforced that, we might, that, but it doesn't, it's not actually the most effective way. And a really good example of that, you know, it's become popular on TV shows these days or movies, right? A really good example of that is looking at the difference between a horse or a dog whisperer and someone that whips their pet into shape. Well, the pet, if you whip it into shape, might obey, it might concede, it might behave the way you want it to in the short term, but you break its spirit and eventually it is going to misbehave, it's going to rebel, it's going to be unhappy, it's going to get sick, and it's not actually going to be have the experience that you want it to have if you actually care about this animal. And so over the long term, although it takes more skill, it takes more patience to really learn how to kind of get in the mind of that animal and and show it a better way that it wants to take, not that it has to take, because it's afraid of the consequences of not taking it, you're going to have a much better result. So maybe that example works for you, maybe not, but we'll try some more as we go along. The point is, is that with our own mind, if we are beating ourselves up for already feeling like crap, we are guaranteeing that we are going to keep feeling like crap. If we are judging ourselves and criticizing ourselves and hating ourselves, if, if I'm saying, oh, I'm so anxious, I hate how anxious I feel, well, now I'm adding anger to anxious. I'm adding fight to flight. Oh, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I'm going to just pull the covers up and watch Netflix all day. Now I'm adding freeze to flight. I'm all staying in the same part of the nervous system and I can't therefore get unstuck from the same components of the nervous system. So I need to figure out a way to be my own horse whisperer, to be my own dog whisperer, to be my own advocate in a way that will actually work. And so the only way, and now I'm going to start getting into a little cliche, the only way is kindness. The only way is acceptance and what I'm calling radical self-acceptance. But I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, okay? It's not just a theory and it's not just psychobabble. It's not just a uh, you know, feel good Mr. Rogers stuff, although I love Mr. Rogers. <laughs> it is, it is really, you know, it is really, really the only practical way to work with yourself that is actually going to work in the long run to ensure your health and happiness. So what do we do? Okay, so I find myself, my mind is spinning, I'm feeling anxious, let's say, because that's the most recent thing that I was feeling. I'm feeling anxious, my mind is spinning, I'm going what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. Well, I need to find a way to dissociate, to separate myself from being so identified with those stories. Okay, so I need to kind of remove myself, my awareness, I need to get distance from the story. Well, how the heck do you do that? You say, well, the story's in my mind. How do I get distance from that? Well, guess what? There are tricks and tools of the mind that we can use to gain that kind of inner distance. 
One author calls it, uh, one author that I like calls it going to the balcony. And now there is, you know, so that, so, but basically it's going to, it's going to incorporate things that we've already been talking about in some of these videos. And one of them, and the first things first is to take what we call, what we've been calling extra and open attention. So the first thing is, is I need to go, whoa, 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 whoa. The monkey mind is going, 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 going. If I try to get in there and wrestle with that monkey, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to get cuffs cut up, you know, that we're just going to fight. And that's only going to cause more commotion, more chaos. And the monkey is going to have my tail and it's going to say, hey, I got you. Right. So I need to kind of learn how to just pause for a second and get away from the fight. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to just pause and I'm going to just ask myself a simple question. I'm going to just, just say to myself, OK, where do I notice this in my body? OK, it's not necessarily a rational question at this point, right? It's a rational approach in total. But where do I notice it in my body? Well, what do you mean? Where do I notice it in my body? Well, just simply by asking the question and now I'm going to start scanning my body sensations. I'm going to notice, well, oh, I feel I feel. I feel some extra sensation in my belly or I feel some extra sensation in my chest. OK, so that's step number one is where do I notice it in my body? Now, I'm going to run through it just to make sure that the way I do it. <laughs> so where do I notice it in my body? OK, now I notice it. I notice it in my belly. I notice it in my chest. Oftentimes with discursive, difficult turmoil emotions, it's going to be somewhere in the this front panel. OK, in the belly or the chest, it doesn't matter where it is, honestly, because what you're really trying to accomplish is to dissociate your awareness away from the stories, from the looping stories and towards something visceral, towards something in your body. And now this is going to be activating that what we've called in the past extra attention. Extra attention is the feeling of aliveness, the literal feeling of aliveness in your body right here in the present moment. And this brings me to an interesting point, because what you're going to notice is that every single one of these stories, unless you are facing a real danger, in which case I want to be in survival mode. If I'm in real danger, if there really is a tiger, then I want fight, flight or freeze to help me out. I want my instinctual intelligence to take over. But other than that, 99.9% .9 of the suffering that human beings experience is about a story. It's about something that is happening, that something that we do not want to happen in the future, something that we want to happen in the future, but we're afraid it won't happen in the future. It's about something that happened in the past that we regret, but it's never point blank in the moment, or it's rarely point blank in the moment. And again, if it is point blank in the moment, then fight, flight, or freeze is an appropriate response. So what I want to do is come back to the visceral reality of my felt living sensations. And I'm not talking about any interpretation of it. I'm not talking about emotion. I'm talking about the tangible body. Okay, the tangible body. So then I'm going to say to myself, OK, well, where do I notice? OK, I notice it in my belly. OK, I might even put my hand right there just to kind of help me help me get my feeling sensations there. I might even rub it a little bit, give myself a little love. All right. So that's kind of a joke. You don't have to do that, but it actually helps. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to then ask myself, am I willing to just feel the, the sensations? Am I willing to just feel the sensations? And now I'm switching my focus from the story, from the mental movie from the ticker tape parade, from the inner critic, from the monkey mind to the sensations in my body. OK, extra attention. Now, I'm just going to try to enhance that and just say, OK, well, what does it feel like? You know, is it, oh, I feel a little bit nauseous and I feel a little, again, not interpreting it, but just, oh, I feel some tension. I feel some tightness. You're going to notice that right when you start to feel it, that tension and that tightness is going to start to shift. It's going to start to change. Follow that allow it to spread, allow it to allow those those physical visceral sensations, allow your awareness to spread to other parts of your body. And eventually you might discover that you are even you that you, your awareness can start to permeate all throughout your body. 
Okay, that's wonderful. But if it just stays in the place where the energy feels kind of stuck or intense, that's okay too. So extra attention. Now open attention. We've talked about open attention in the past. Open attention is the experience of the space all around your body. So now not only am I aware of the physical sensations around my body, but I'm aware of the space around my body. Okay, there's really good neurological research that goes to that should, demonstrates why this is all effective and we don't really have time to get into that today. So hopefully you can give it a shot and take my word for it, right? But, but you don't have to take my word for it beyond the willingness to give it a shot because if you give it a shot, you'll get the results. And when you get the results, then you'll have your own proof. You'll have your own demonstration, right? So at a certain point, you have to see for yourself at the beginning, you might have to take someone's word for it when you're learning something new to be willing to give it a try. And also you might have to be willing to give it a try enough times, recognizing that you might have some beginner's luck, but at the same time, any skill worth cultivating is one that you have to practice to be good at. And the more you practice it, the better at it you get. So open attention is the awareness of the space around my body. And for today's purposes, I'm just gonna say, just feel into and it and, and as we're talking about it right now just see what it feels like maybe you close your eyes maybe you keep them open what do i mean by when i say allow my awareness to fill the room that i'm in this is what i'm saying it's that is some of these things are they have to be experientially felt because you're like well what do you mean by that well you can only know what i mean by that by doing it and being like oh yeah i can feel my awareness in the top right corner of the room i can feel it behind me. I can feel it to the left. I can feel it to the right. I can feel it below me. I can feel it above me. And I can allow my awareness to fill the space around my body. And this is going to be the key. What I want to do is then identify my awareness with the space around my body as who I am. That awareness, the space around my body is going to host the experience of my body. Again, you have to experience it in order to understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going to be, I'm going to say, okay, now the, ex and when I ask myself these questions is like, how do I just host this experience from the awareness around my body? How do I let my awareness be bigger than the situation? How do I let my awareness be bigger than my emotions or my physical sensations? And I host them. Okay. And then I ask myself, can I be okay with this? Can I just allow myself to witness this, to observe this, to be okay with this? And sometimes the answer is going to be no, I'm not okay with it. So then I'm going to go, well, can I allow myself to be okay that I'm not okay with it? Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Or can I allow myself to be okay with it that I'm not okay with it? Okay. You know, you can keep expanding your awareness to a wider and wider degree and including the space. It doesn't need to just be limited to the space in your body. And what you're going to find is as your awareness gets farther away from your body and you gain more and you get to a level of acceptance of okayness, you're going to turn off the alarm switch and you're going to get into the thriving mode. And that monkey mind is going to dissolve. And I actually like to think of it like that. I like to, I feel it like that. It was like, okay, if I'm hosting this experience and if I'm, my awareness is in the space around my body, then I let those physical tensions or those emotions or those stories come off of my body and they like melt into the space. They melt into the space. Again, this is not, this part of it is not really these are things that we can do that activate certain things in our brain that get the result they want. But you're not going to be able to explain how this works, really, except for knowing that it works if you do it. You know, and so what you're doing is you're, you're, you, you're using your own brain the way it works. Okay. And so again, like I said, this author that I like calls it going to the balcony. So he sees himself as if he was in the balcony and his life circumstances are going on, going on on the stage. 
And so he can still get information from those circumstances, but the further away, the bigger our awareness is around the situation, the smaller our emotion, our emotional reactivity will be. When our emotional reactivity, remember emotional reactivity is anger, fear, and depression, fight, flight, or freeze. When our emotional reactivity shrinks, then we have clarity and we go into the thriving part of our nervous system. We can effectively problem solve, we can get a breather, we can take a break, we can actually, you know, we can actually, we can actually feel better. And we don't, we do it not by wrestling with, not by fighting with, not by judging, not by beating up, not by criticizing, but by letting our awareness get bigger than the situation. And this is just a tool, this is a mental, neurological capacity that we can exercise. The, the law of the brain is neuroplasticity. What you focus on grows. If you focus on your awareness getting bigger and bigger, you will grow in the neurological capacity for that to be a reality for you. And so you can practice expanding your awareness to include and host your situation. And then imagining imagination is amazing we say we have a saying in our in our language that says oh it's just your imagination there's even a song that sometimes gets stuck in my head when i teach this it's just your imagination right well guess what just your imagination it's not just your imagination your imagination is extremely powerful your mind is extremely powerful think about the last time you had a uh, nightmare well was anything was the dangerous thing happening? Of course, it wasn't. It was just pictures. It was just your imagination. But did it not have a physiological effect? Was your heart not pounding? Were, were you not clenching your teeth? Were your body not tense? Did you not wake up with sore muscles or tired? Well, you did, because your just your imagination had an incredible effect on your physiology. Well, just your imagination, when you're awake, can also have an incredible effect on your physiology. So imagining your expanded awareness and then imagining those stories from the monkey mind or those physical tensions or those pains or those anxieties or those angers dissolving into that awareness like, 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 a, um, like something dissolving into space, then that will actually have a physiological effect. You're going to notice that your heart rate is going to go down. Your breathing is going to be more slow and even. The physical tensions in your body are going to go away. That nausea you were feeling with that anxiety is going to dissipate. And you're going to be in more of a state of peace and clarity. And you are going to have more access to the thriving part of your nervous system so that even if there is a problem that you need to solve, you're going to have a better capacity to do so and you're going to be on your way to health and happiness, and you are not going to be trying to, uh, you know, fight, flight, your, fight, flight, or freeze your way out of fight, flight, or freeze. You accept. Can I accept the situation? No. Okay, can I accept that I can't accept the situation? Yeah. Or, or what if it's no? Okay, can I accept? And it gets a little, you might get a little bit tongue twisted as you keep going wider, but it doesn't matter it, again, it's just a, it's just a tool to activate certain parts of your brain. It doesn't need to be literal. All you need to do is get to a point where you can accept it, where you can notice it, where you can witness it, where you can watch it, and then to allow it to dissipate, to allow it to resolve. Okay. So any questions, any comments, please put them in the comments below. Feel free to share this video. Uh, with anyone that you'd like, feel free to check in with us. If you need more assistance, then this video can provide and we can try to uh, point you in the direction of good resources. We'll continue to do these videos on a weekly basis and I hope they're a useful support for you. And I hope that uh, despite the difficulties in the world around us, you are learning some things about taking charge of your own nervous system and that you have a degree of responsibility, but also efficacy, capacity to influence your own experience, to be in charge of your own thinking, feeling, and acting so that you're not a victim of the circumstances. Instead, you are the creator of your own inner sense of well-being and, and the way in which that ripples out into the world to your loved ones, to your community, 
uh, is, is a truly a benefit, okay? Uh, love you all. Have a wonderful day. Feel free to be in touch. And my name is Michael, and be well. Take care.